this is America's man's man. Let's take Gottheim and the episode, uh, the previous episode, a step further. So let's let's take a look at what Planned Baronhood has really done over the years. What what they've done by seeding um, our um, government school children with uh, with a uh, a taste for promiscuity and uh, successfully so. So so the to the effect that everybody is. Um, you know, it's the 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 swinging the swinging culture of the '70s and the '60s, um, and uh, and it's just rot, stinking fruits, stinking fruits. Nobody's faithful to anybody anymore. And again, like I said before, in, in God Hyman, there's no return on investment relationally. And this is actually a phrase I'm borrowing from a, a Harvard um, a Harvard researcher. Uh, I was talking to at a um, coffee shop one one time. <clears throat> And uh, and he was uh, he was very frustrated because he he wouldn't get that return on investment you usually get in a uh, you know in a monogamous kind of relationship. Um, there's no re- he said he said Pete there's no return on there's no ROI you know there's no return on investment um, from a macro romantic sense um, as opposed to a macro economic sense uh, from a, a kind of macro and, and by the way. It's the stability of the family which ensures a, a strong economy, right? So without a strong, um, without a strong family unit, you can't have a strong economy, and everything goes to, well, you know what. Um, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's try to uh, try to let's because a lot of people, because millennials are so fixated, uh, they're they're obsessed uh, with the with 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 what they can see and and uh, and their their experience and oh let's tell a story um you know which is actually one of the reasons that uh, my uh, one of my primarily missions uh, in evangelism is to um is to develop the fall musical which you can learn more about at fallmusical.com um <clears throat> oftentimes oh look isn't that beautiful it's an american flag i love it i love to see our beautiful red white and blue anyway um <clears throat> So, uh, what what Planned Parenthood has essentially done is they've driven uh, they've dri- they've driven the supply. They've you know how like when the government uh, forced farmers to stop, they paid farmers to stop growing food because there was too much food, and uh, because the supply was so gigantic. Um, the uh, the prices went so low that the farmers couldn't keep couldn't sustain themselves. It was unsustainable because they were growing too much food and um, there was nobody to buy it. So the prices went way down. Well, <clears throat> kind of uh, in- inversely, what Planned Baronhood has done over the last uh, uh, Baronhood, uh, not Planned Baronhood, no, but Planned Baronhood, as in we're going we're gonna to make these women barren. Uh, we're going to make these girls barren so that no one's ever going to want them. And, uh, and furthermore, if they do ever have children, they're never going to have the wherewithal to raise them because they won't have a good man in their life. Um, <clears throat> the, hence the fatherhood epidemic. Uh, swinging 60s, baby. Here I come. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> Here we go. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really silly when you think about all the, the weird media messages that um, advertisers have... Uh, somehow um, replaced the Protestant work ethic with, um, and it all comes down to the false gospel of instant gratification, but that's another uh, another video, um, another episode of America's Man's Man. How do you like the new jingle, by the way? Let me know in the comments below is what everybody on YouTube is saying, so heck, why not? Um, but seriously, uh, you want to subscribe at americasmansman.com because... Uh, I, uh, I I wouldn't bet on this channel being here for very for, for very long. Um, anyway, um, so um, uh, in the same way, Planet Baronhood said, "Well, what if we could somehow take away?" Because remember, the people who started Planet Baronhood, like Margaret Sanger, um, they were uh, they they didn't have successful relationships, or they were abused themselves, and so they said, "Well." instead of feel happy for these women who do have great relationships and who do have great men in their life, uh, why don't we instead, why don't we instead try to make ourselves more desirable by taking down the good women, the beautiful women, the, um, the, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's try to, 
let's try to uh, give uh, give the uh, the kind of crazy the craziest women a handicap advantage for whatever reason because I guess that was Margaret Sanger, and of course she she also said you know we don't want word to get out that we're that our goal is to exterminate the Negro population. This is Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, uh, which. Uh, is is the, uh, you know, we're actually paying, whether you know it or not, if you're paying taxes here in America like I am, we're playing, we're, we are paying Planned Parenthood to murder the next generation. Um, you know, it, it makes sense why Bill Gates would uh, support this, this whole uh, virus and, and maybe even funded the virus in, in that Wuhan lab because now, uh, I mean, who's going to benefit? I mean, who's benefiting now from all these stores being closed. That's right, Amazon. It's the whole Silicon Valley axis of evil, um, as uh, we're, we at America's Man's Man are fond of calling it. But um, anyway, so what's Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood really done here? Uh, well, they've, um, I mean, what do men want intrinsically? Well, we, we want a pure girl. We, we don't, uh, you know, the thought of putting our, uh, our member uh, somewhere where other dude has been doesn't really appeal to anybody, but it's of course more than that. It's really about the purity and the um, the uh, the goodness of um, of a girl uh, that uh, that God made just for just for me, just for you. Um, and um, and of course, uh, you know the the ugly, uh, the plain women, the <laughs> the plain women, the dirty faced women, the the uh, the crazy women. Uh, they can't be happy for, for, for the women who do have good men. And so what they did was they launched this very successful campaign over the last uh, 70 years or so, since whatever, since Planned Parenthood has been around, um, <clears throat> to make life miserable for those, uh, for those who have good men because they, they want to take them down. Because uh, I, I guess that's, um, it's kind of sad, but that's, uh, it, it's just the reality of things. And I'm just reporting the facts, so don't get angry at me. Uh, you know, just, I mean, don't get angry at anyone. Just, just, just kind of observe and think, think folks, let's think, let's, uh, let's resist the fake news media narrative for a moment. And let's just think about this. Okay. So, um, you know, as, as we said, when, when you, when you, uh, when you make the supply smaller then demand goes up, right? Okay. It's supply and demand. Well, here's the thing. What they've done is they've really so so these um, these scheming cerebral uh, plain-faced women, dirty-faced women who can't get the good men. What they've done with Planned Parenthood is they have launched a highly successful campaign to uh, to to take out the most attractive women to be. So maybe they couldn't take out the the good women of their time. Okay, but they could. What they could do. Was they could figure out a way to miseducate, to lead astray the um, the the most promising women, the uh, you know those would be uh, you know Miss Americas and that sort of thing, uh, those would be uh, future moms, future uh, future um, f- future families, and so they've um, they've used uh, the ugly women to to take out the bad men, uh, the or to take out the good men who you know, who rejected them because they, they, for whatever reason, they weren't, they weren't, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they weren't up to snuff with what we want. Um, you know, what, uh, what our, our high standards, which are way up here when society's standards today have fallen so very far. Um, and, uh, and of course, America's man's men can never settle for, uh, for what passes for relationships, for sex, for, uh, to today, because it's such a low standard. And, uh, and it's at the end of the day, it's really just what television has done to America, television and its offspring. Now more, now more the anti-social media. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so anyway, so planned barrenhood has effectively, effectively in a macro economic sense, in a macro romantic economic sense, uh, it's um, it's taken out the supply. It's taken out the supply, creating <laughs> net romantic dead weight loss in the economy. Uh, so basically, spoiling a whole crop of women, uh, a whole gener- generations, by the way. You know, starting with the '70s and, and moving up uh, up to now. So that that purity, that um, 
that that kind of zest for life uh, that that a woman would would have with you when you're dating her for for the first time, uh, and uh, and courting her, uh, she always has that, uh, that 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 other guy that first experience in the back of her mind. There's something that's not quite there, and she she'll never really feel the way that she she did that first time when in, in a healthy circumstance it would have been with you, uh, but uh, but it was someone else because because that's what passes for normal in this. Uh, uh, so-called post-Christian age, uh, which is really, um, again, a product of the, the fake news media messages. So, it may be too late for millennials who have been bowled over by the wrong guy, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't maintain the high standard, uh, for, or for most millennials anyway, um, but uh, it should, doesn't mean we shouldn't maintain the high standard that America has always had the Christian standard, okay? And the Christian standard is, is monogamy one man, one woman. Um, because right now, again, you have um, <laughs> essentially Planned Parenthood has has drastically reduced the supply of eligible bachelorettes. How have they done so? Well, they've, they've gotten them hitched to the wrong person. And, what, and once, once you do that, they're never eligible to meet the, the would-be right person because and that's the end goal of the uh, of the plain women, the women who can't get the good guys, who can't get the America's man's men, um, to take out to take out their competition, um, uh, to take out uh, essentially to get back at the the good men by by taking out their their would be lovers, by turning men, by turning good men against each other. And um, I mean, if you think that's uh, if you think that's a conspiracy theory, if you think, oh no, women could never ever do that, well, well, you, you don't know women very, very well. At least, at least not the the ugly faced, uh, the or, I'm sorry, the plain faced women. Um, the feminists uh, is probably the most accurate description because you have good, um, you have plain faced women who want the good for the other women, and of course we want to encourage that and, and themselves, and they're the ones who end up succeeding more so than if they had tried to sabotage other people, because you can't, I mean, the, the plain-faced feminists, I mean, they're carrying anger to their, to their, to their grave, and, and of course nobody, that's not a desirable characteristic by any stretch for anyone, and um, I mean, talk about a, a net romantic loss, that's a tragedy, right? And, and feminism is essentially anger, it's retaliatory anger um, just a, it's really a rebellion against one's place in the natural order. Um, but, um, but so Planned Parenthood to, to kind of, um, return to the kind of the, the big picture here, uh, what they've done is they have reduced the supply of eligible bachelor, bachelor, the bachelorettes, let's try saying that how many times fast. And, um, in doing so, um, they've, uh, they've driven up, uh, they've, They've driven up with the help with the help of the uh, the fake news media uh, suggestion. Um, they uh, they've their their bureaucratic friends by by doing so by uh, uh, by by selling young women on the um, the false gospel of instant gratification of of giving in of giving up their hymen giving up their virginity. Um, they've sold. Um, they've they've uh, they've driven. They've 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 reduced the supply of eligible of eligible bachelorettes who go on to drain the economy, <laughs> who go on to pathetically uh, try to raise kids all by themselves without a man behind them. Um, it's like it's almost like they want them to intentionally fail for some reason, uh, and driving up um, driving up demand uh, among among men. Uh, you know, resulting in consequences. I'll leave to your imagination uh, to, uh, to to connect. But um, but the, the again the the point here is to in order to break the cycle on a macro scale, uh, we do have to uh, return to the uh, the Christian values of this Christian nation. Because remember, without Christ, there is no America. Without America, you know, America is a nation founded upon Christian values, upon monogamy. Uh, we fended off the Mormon threat. Um, We've been unsuccessful at fending off other threats to the uh, to to monogamy, um, and just to be to be clear, because uh, for whatever you know, because of fake news psychosis, I have to clarify that monogamy is is one man, one woman, for a lifetime, um, and uh, and they, you know how they mock. I remember the they they ended up throwing it out, but just to give you a, a quick contemporary example in the in the office, the original ending 
the original final episode uh, featured a, a marriage, and these um, these effeminate homosexual writers in Hollywood had had written it so that initially it was supposed to end with a marriage ceremony, and uh, and the husband and wife were, were on Dwight Schrute's farm, and they were standing in a grave. Um, so this is this is the sense of humor that that's what they think is funny. They ended up getting rid of it because you know they figured people would see through it in the end. Um, you know, in the people, uh, you know, millennials like, yeah, The Office, it's so funny. It's like, yeah, so what happens when you, uh, you know, when you, you get miseducated by govern, government uh, schools? Um, and all this kind of from communism. But, uh, but, but uh, you know, the bottom line, men, don't settle for less than your worth because you're worth so much more than 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 uh, than sour grapes, and um, and that's what feminism is. Uh, you know, fine. You know, you think whoredom is a little strong. Uh, I guess that maybe that's a better, maybe that's a a friendlier euphemism. Uh, feminism is sour grapes, and and that's that's really what you get for a lifetime. Unfortunately, um, you know, when you uh, when you uh, attach yourself um, to a feminist in. Uh, in, in the most, uh, you know, what should be the most holy, most sacred covenant of marriage, and um, <clears throat> you don't see these signs, um, you know, you're a ship headed for uh, for, for destruction, and um, uh, and uh, and so anyway, uh, don't don't settle. Always uh, always go for what you want, and uh, and I at the end of the day, despite all the dancing around that the, the feminists do verbally, physically, or, or you know. <laughs> Uh, maybe not so much these days with the corona uh, corona scare, but um, but uh, but but in, in general, what you you want purity? Um, don't settle for anything less because you're worth more. You're you're worth more than that. God put you here for great things, and uh, and He doesn't want you to marry a feminist whore. America's man's man.